Bill? How are you doing, Tim? We're here in Mayapak this morning with uh, Bill Fitzgerald, our local blacksmith. Uh, it's an old time, it's an old time tradition, and it's something that he makes his living on, and he keeps it modern. Uh, what is blacksmith, Bill? Blacksmithing is something that's been in my family for a long time. I'm the seventh generation of a blacksmith, first one born here. Traditional blacksmiths would do any ornamental iron work, as well as shoeing horses. I've retired from shoeing about three years ago. I make my living now just doing ornamental work. So this isn't a hobby or anything. This is actually your business, this your living. This is a full-time job. And is there enough work? What do you do? A lot of the work that I do is for a store that we have in town. I do curtain rods, I do furniture, fireplace tools. Some of the uh, contractors come to off us if they need some kind of a bracket or a brace or some kind of metal work. So you were telling me before, you're actually on the internet. We so do have an internet website. You're really modern. Uh, the old time <laughs> tradition has come up to the 21st century, yes. So your shop is modern with all power tools and all kinds of stuff. I have, I have power electric welders, I have drill presses, I have all different tools. But a lot of my training, I still can use the, the forge, and I can use the anvil, and we'll be able to forge a piece that I need. Today we're going to make something really simple. It's going to be a bottle opener. I like and, doing uh, that. It's just kind of a cute little thing Hopefully we can I'm make. going to be able to make one, too. We'll we're going to see, see how, how you do go. later. I'll show you it first. <laughs> but uh, this is the forge right here. Forge is right here. Brings it up to a little more than 2,000 degrees. It'll make the um, metal that I'm using soft enough. Once it's soft, I can shape it and uh, chain and uh, form it the way I like. Now, when your ancestors were blacksmiths, they didn't have a forge like this, I'm sure. The forge they used was coals. It was soft coals, a bituminous coal. It reached a temperature of about 2,800 degrees. Do you ever do that now? I do on demonstrations, yeah. So this metal here, what is this metal that we're heating up? This is the mild steel that I use to make most of the gates, headboards, railings, fireplace tools. It's just a mild steel. It's not a tool steel. I just stick with them, basically the mild steel. And how do you know when it's ready? I mean, obviously it's Go glowing. Go by the color, by the okay. color of it, yeah. Now, we got our lights on here today, but you told me before that uh, blacksmith shop's generally pretty dark. Traditionally, the blacksmith shop is dark. That's why you can see the color of the iron. So you can actually tell if it's hot or not. Right. Just Without by the color. to touch it. No, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, red hot and white hot is the colors that I'm looking for. So is this baby ready now? I'm ready. Here we okay. go. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is flatten that out a bit. I don't see anything flying off there, but I'm glad I got my safety glasses on because that looks like you're hitting that pretty hard. Well, I am. Strike when the iron's hot. Although it still looks hot, it's, it's cool enough to put back into the fire. I flattened it out a little bit. I'm going to put a little dimple, dimple in it so we can catch the bottle cap. I like the gas fire. It's very quick, easy, and it's very clean compared to the forge uh, with coal. A lot of black bellowing smoke and a lot of soot. That's just propane? Yes. So you have acetylene and other gases here, but uh, you only use that for welding. When I work with the iron, it's usually either the forge, oxygen acetylene, and the welding, I usually uh, a wire feed welder. Now this is a tiny little thing, a handheld tool we're going to be making, but I know you, you make some huge, gigantic well, things too. I make driveway gates and railings. What's the biggest thing you ever made? Probably the biggest thing is the driveway gate. Yeah. So a big, huge gate that's uh, blocking an entire driveway. Right, right. It's nice because it's not the gate that I want to make. It's the gate that, that the, the homeowner designs. Whatever design they want, they draw it out. They usually, my wife and I will sit. My wife and the homeowner will design something and we'll try to bring it to life. So they don't have to pick something out of a catalog. They just tell you what you want. You yep. draw it up or they draw right. it up and they Some get exactly what they want. Some are very straight and others have a lot of curls and twists and, and different design to it. Is that ready? Well, yeah, let's, um, let's nip off a tiny bit of this. What's that tool? That's called a hardy and it's going to cut it. So that's definitely a traditional way of cutting the steel. I have other ways of cutting some saws and band saws and bigger machinery. But this is what a blacksmith that's probably blacksmith used for the past use. few hundred yep. years at least, yep. right? Well, I only have two hands. One hand to hold the material, one hand to hold the hammer, and the anvil holds the chisel for me. This way it can be cut. 
So this little piece will be the one to catch the, the, uh, the bottle cap. What I'll do now is just flip it over. We ready? Okay, wow, you heated that up good. That is hot. So what we're going to do is... Uh, we'll What's that tool there that you're putting this the is This is a hardy. It holds the chisel for me. So the hardies come in different shapes. They come in different shapes, yes. Depending on what you want to do with the metal. Right. You can cut it square, you can cut it round, you can do whatever you want to do. So what I'll do is just cut it off here. Now what I'll do is I'll... Anything on my, under the anvil, don't touch. It might be hot. Okay. So we'll put it back in here and make some kind of a handle for it. So for safety measures, you just put all the hot stuff underneath if the anvil? If you're in the blacksmith shop, anything that's underneath the anvil, don't touch. You ever step on anything hot? Yes. Uh, <laughs> all of a sudden, what happens today, especially with my boots here, rubber soles, all of a sudden you smell rubber burning, and you don't realize it, and you look down and... You're looking for the rubber, and then all of a sudden yeah. you feel it, so you give yourself a hot foot. So this is the kind of handle we're going to make now? Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a little decorative handle. What I'll do is I'll flatten it out like this, and then we'll bring it around. Now this is a lot thinner than the stock we're using, so... Right, I was just playing with a little... How long that's a quarter inch. Does it take like twice as long to heat up or something like that? No, I'll probably, I'll probably heat it one... I'll probably get that done in one heat. Okay. So it's now shorter, and I'm going to need to hold it with a pair of tongs. stock I have different tongs for different sizes of material or whatever I'm working with okay you got the piece in there the handles getting hot now it, it looks bright to me how can you tell just well, by the color? after experience I know how hot things are yeah so is it the color I mean when Definitely it gets the bright color. orange right right okay so obviously you can't pick it up with your hand now what's no, that you using, picked it up with using the tongs okay so Just like the Hardy, there's a tongs for each purpose. Yes. So now it's flattened out. I'll curl it now. It's still hot enough that I can... This is the decorative end. Yes. So it's thinned out. Once it was thinned out, it was easy enough. It held the heat enough that I can, um, I can curl it around. Okay. I'm going to bend it one more time. One of the things I'll use the tool is water. Once the whole thing is hot, I'm going to want to heat, hit this curl. If I hit it while it's hot, I'm going to destroy it. But by cooling off just the tip of it, I'll be able to hit it and bring the handle around. Okay. One more heat. Selective heating. Yes. So I need to hit that little curl. And if I hit it while it's hot, I'll destroy it. So by dipping it in the water, I can cool just the curl. So here is a, uh, a bottle opener made out of material that has the texture of a bark. So that's basically it. That's the finished one right there. That'll be the finished one. What I'm going to do is cool it off, polish it up, and we'll see if it works. And so you actually have these in your catalog, and this is some, an this item This is something that you I have on the internet, yes. This is one of many different kinds of bottle openers. Okay, great. Let's polish it up, and then uh, we'll try it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me cool it off for safety. Okay, I don't like the looks of it. Got a little bit of hand. See, there's the light went out. And you, you can tell just by how long you put it in the water whether it's safe or not. When oh, it's still warm. It's still warm, but when it comes out, it's it stays, not, it's it stays wet. You put it in and it dries off immediately, it's way too hot. This looks like this for a right-handed person. Well, we'll see if it works. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll polish it up and see how it looks. All right, so next step is polishing. Polishing we'll it up. Finish work. Right.
Okay, this is a piece I see that you've you've been working on. You've polished a little bit, and now when you're done with this one, it'll look shiny like this. I'll polish it up. You'll be really be able to see the what texture of it, this. What is this? This is a wire wheel on a okay. bench grinder. You can see it already coming oh, to yeah, life. Nice. Well, that's not hot now, right? It's not hot now. Wow, that's something. It's the finished product. The wire wheel really brings out the um, the texture in the material. So we started with the, the black metal. What was the black on top of that? That's called a mill scale. It's a material they put on there just to keep the material from uh, rubbing. So they actually rusting. They put that on yes. in the foundry, I right. guess. Protect the material. And you take it off when you heat it and bang it. Putting it in the fire, banging it, does knock it off, yes. And then this wire wheel, which was really flying, that thing really uh, brings out the texture and really shines it up. It polishes very nice. It will rust as it is now. The next step will be I'll put a uh, finishing oil on it. It's a Danish furniture oil and we'll protect this. Okay, so it's like a thick oil that stays on there and we don't have to worry about it rusting. Right, right. So yeah. even if we're just gonna come into contact with water or do we have to reapply? After a while, after using it a lot, you might need to put a reapply like paint. It will come off, but it does protect it. Okay, so before we put the oil on, mm -hmm. let's try it out and make sure it works. Sounds good. Okay, we've got our finished bottle opener and now we've got our fancy bottle of water here. Well, let's see if it works. Let's see. Oh yeah, it works that works fine. good. Let me see that bottle opener. That fancy water is yours, Bill. Thank you very it's much. It's beautiful. Okay, well, thanks a lot. It's been successful. And uh, you're our Mahopak blacksmith. I hope we'll see you around. I, I think you go down to Muscoot, and where else do you go? You Sometimes go I work at Muscoot. I hope to work for the county, Putnam County, and do some workshops and demonstrations. Demonstrations? Do you ever give classes in it? Sometimes I do give workshops for individuals that like to try um, blacksmithing themselves. When's the thing up in uh, Putnam County, next month? I think it's the end of this month on a okay. Friday and a Saturday. I don't have the dates top of my head. All right, very good. Well, we'll be looking for you. You're welcome. Take right. care now. Thanks bye -bye a lot. Now.